The run-up in commodities came to a sudden halt on Friday in anticipation of a possible rate hike in China. What will drive the space and natural resource equities? Well, Evan Smith manages the $800 million Global Resources Fund. It has outperformed 98% of its competition this year. He joins us this morning. Uh, so, Evan, oil, gold had strong selling on Friday, uh, a little bit of a bounce back in today's session. Are you buying? Yeah, we, we think we should be buying uh, any pullbacks. Uh, we remain constructive on commodities pretty much across the board, uh, particularly oil, gold, copper, and um, some of the ag plays. So what is it? I mean, if we're back to fundamentals this morning, what is it that can drive some of those pullbacks? Is it just fears that China's slamming, not tapping the brakes, or is this all the Forex market? Um, a little of both, probably. Um, sure, there's been a good surge in the uh, in the Chinese market, and um, you know, demand demand in China drives a lot of commodity uh, demand, global demand ar uh, around the globe, right? And so, um, you know, any any thought that they might be pausing or trying to slow down their economy, um, usually you see some some selling, some profit taking in the commodities, but. Um, we, we've seen those pauses create great buying opportunities earlier this year, back in uh, May, after the uh, Chinese government was pretty, uh, pretty, pretty direct on trying to cool their their hot uh, housing market. Um, but it's also a foreign currency play as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the dollar and, and dollar weakness and fears of a much weaker dollar are um, pushing investors into to, uh, hard assets, including you know, uh, gold and, and many other commodities. So uh, since you buy the equity side of the commodity space, t translate some of the uh, forex fluctuations into uh, what is going to mean for earnings. Because we've seen the run-up in the currencies of commodity producing countries, but then this weaker dollar might make it tougher when it comes to uh, uh, to repatriating some of that. So. Sure, sure. You know, it depends on where you're buying and, and who has commodity or at least currency sensitivity on the cost side for some of the commodity producers. Right. Um, obviously, any, any of the commodity producers who are who their costs are in U.S. dollars are actually going to see an improvement in profits. Um, so we we like. Um, uh, several uh, names in the oil, the mining space, uh, even the ag space right now. Uh, so now that BHP abandoned uh, the, the, the pod ash bid, does that change your outlook there, either on uh, that particular space or, or those companies? Uh, you yeah, know, the potash, uh, very interesting story. I think the you know, BHP bid obviously brought, um, you know, a lot of attention to that story and, and maybe the fundamental uh, long-term strategic nature of potash. Um, one of the names we like actually is CF Industries. It's the uh, largest uh, nitrogen producer here in North America. You've got great uh, economics for nitrogen production. They're going to see 50% earnings growth in 2011. Um, and so we, we think that's actually a very interesting uh, name uh, on the ag space. You also like uh, coal. I mean, Massey, Bloomberg's reporting, uh, is going to be putting itself up for sale, possibly. Would mm -hmm. you be a buyer of Massey? Um, you know, we own Massey. Um, we, uh, we do think it's, uh, it's probably a strategic asset. It's one of the... Uh, um, uh, you know, better assets. They, have, they do have some older assets, but one of the uh, the better metallurgical and, and some of the better compliance coal assets on the uh, in the east on the east coast. Um, some of that makes its way out to export markets. Uh, some of that can be used for perhaps an integrated buyer, which was rumored to be um, at all this morning, mm -hmm. um, which uh, would make sense to uh, to integrate further some of their uh, U.S. operations. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Evan, for joining us this morning.